So welcome back everyone. This is day four of my Pokemon December vlog. In my last video I discussed the starter Pokemon and oh shit, what just happened? Oh, well, I must have encountered a legendary Pokemon. Dang, when they when they appear just out of nowhere. That's like crazy feeling. Anyway, I'm gonna discuss legendaries. In my last video, I split up the discussion by region. Today, I'm not going to do that, as the very few points I'm going to make will be pretty redundant if I split them up by region. We'll start with the list of all the legendaries I've used in my normal playing of the games, because I said I really don't use a lot of them. First time I played through Red, I had all three legendary birds in Mewtwo. Later playthroughs, I pretty much used Articuno, Zapdos, and Mewtwo all day, every day. And every just-for-fun playthrough mainly glitch runs and stuff like that, I use Mew all the time. First crystal version playthrough, I used Suicune, and like I said, I didn't beat it because Suicune sucks balls. Anyway, I'm getting a little obscene here, but deal with it. In my Emerald version, I used Rayquaza in the Elite Four. It was the only way I got through the Elite Four because my team was underleveled. It's in my Diamond version, level 100. If you could level up farther than that, it, it would be at least 300 by now because it's defeated the Elite Four about 250 times by itself. And then I used Kyogre and Groudon because who didn't? Diamond version, after I beat it, I used Giratina a bit. It leveled up like once. In Soul Silver, I had Lugia on my team for the Elite Four. And the entire second half of the game, I had Ho Oh on my team for about two days. It leveled up like once. And in Black version, I didn't use Victini, but it was always in my party just because I love it. So as you can see, there are very few legendaries that I've used in the games. Thirteen, to be exact. And how many legendaries are there now? Well, let's count them. Articuno, Zapdos, Moltres, Mewtwo, Mew, Raikou, Entei, Suicune, Lugia. Actually, let's not. I'll just tell you, there are more legendary Pokemon than most people would care to count to. Forty-seven, to be exact. My main complaint with the legendaries is that for the most part, we're almost required to encounter them. I mean, these are supposed to be rare creatures, only to be seen by a few select trainers over the course of their life. If this were real life, what are the odds that one young boy from the town of Twinleaf would be forced to encounter four of these extremely rare Pokemon over the course of the few days it takes to complete the storyline? Are we just lucky bitches like Ash Ketchum? Ash, on the first day of his Pokemon journey, sees a legendary Pokemon Ho-Oh that wasn't even discovered yet. Then, if you remember from the second episode, he sees the three legendary birds on an engraving or something in the Pokemon Center, and mistakes Articuno for the Ho-Oh we saw, not to mention the countless movies and everything after that in which Ash encountered nearly every single legendary Pokemon that's been discovered. I mean, when you're first starting out on your Pokemon journey, you're expected to challenge all the Pokemon gyms and defeat the Elite Four. You're not expected to encounter the legendaries and add them to your team to do such things. The Professor wants you to complete the Pokedex, but honestly he has no intentions of you ever doing it, because the legendaries are in that Pokedex, and let's face it, nobody sees them. If we go by the anime, it seems as if the only legendary that might be encountered as a part of the game would be Mewtwo, seeing how Giovanni's a gym leader and had control of him. Not that encountering Mewtwo would be a good thing, he's probably going to catch you when you got your guard down, but whatever. Now, while I haven't used very many legendaries, I always catch them if I'm playing through a game, just because of their rarity. It's not like you're going to encounter Lugia or Ho-Oh more than once if you don't catch it the first time, but another thing that really bugs me is not the limited availability, but the unavailability of certain Pokemon. There are some Pokemon that in order to catch them, you have to literally have them put into your game. This means that you're given the task of completing the Pokedex, but it's literally impossible for you to do that without attending these events and having the Pokemon put into your game. I've gone to three of these events and gotten a Selby, a Shiny Suicune, and a Victini. Not to mention that everybody who goes to these events gets one, making them seem even less valuable in the general scope of things. I mean, they're extremely rare, but everyone and their brother who went to the event has one. But it still irritates me. Some of these Pokemon I have absolutely no way of obtaining. For example, on my Diamond version, I have a completed non-legendary Pokedex. It took me ages to complete. Like, I have over 400 hours of playtime on that game. But I'll never achieve the goal of completing a full Pokedex, because there are 9 legendary Pokemon that I still don't have, and that I'll never be able to obtain. I can't trade with people on Diamond anymore, because nobody uses it. They've all moved on. And plus, if I trade with people who didn't obtain them legitimately, I effectively haven't completed the Pokedex legitimately. A legit Pokedex was my goal, but I'll never be able to complete one, because the only way I could get certain Pokemon onto that game, such as Mew, which was only released one time, 
It's through events that I've missed by five years. But anyway, the only real reason I don't use legendaries in my actual teams is because they're overpowered and they make the game too easy. Plus, you get them too late in the game, when you already have a full team built. You can't just replace one of your other team members for the legendary because you just caught it and you already have a bond with the other members of your party. In black version, for example, you're forced to catch the legendary dragon, but I purposely deposited it before the final battle because I just didn't want to replace any of my team members. I've made one interesting exception. When playing Soul Silver, I got all my Pokemon from my team as eggs before I truly started playing. Later on, I decided to get rid of two of them because they just weren't doing well. Later, I got rid of two more. I had some open spots on my team and decided to fill one with Lugia, one of my favorite legendaries. Lugia was honestly the worst attacker on my team, but because it's a legendary, it could take like every single hit, even super effective, and it was overall the strongest I had. Sure, it made the Elite Four and Kanto easier, but Kanto's already a cakewalk. Anyway, yeah, this wasn't a very long video, but I've talked quite a bit. In the next few days, my videos will entail the different regions and their geography, interesting facts and other information, starting with Kanto. I'm not planning on discussing the storyline too much, mainly just the region as a whole. Maybe get into the Pokemon available and what a good team would look like. See you next time. Oh, subscribe if you're interested, and want to make sure you see tomorrow's video right when it comes out.